leave your message. Hey, Kelly, it's Rich. Hey, why do you work? I'm Rich Levine, and this is Meet Me at the Gate, where we're not just talking theory, we're tackling real-world problems head-on, driving solutions that supercharge productivity and team dynamics. Every episode is a journey towards improvement, empowering you, the manager, to lead with innovation and confidence. Join us to transform everyday roadblocks into highways for success. Both wear a hat, both have glasses, both have a beard. Hey, Rich! Yeah, you're both Even tall. His employees are like walking up. Hey, Rick. No, mm. sorry, wrong guy. Yeah. Amazing. I'm the CR guy. Yeah, I never put that together until now that you say it and you're sitting next to each other. Like, yep, okay. It's scary. It. Aaron, why do you work? Why do I work? Pay the bills? Ty, why do you work? I'm pretty passionate about this industry and the ecosystem, if we sometimes refer to it as. But you know, the thing is, if you do, if you're not doing what you really enjoy or find passion in or love doing, it's probably not going to work out too well for you. So I get excited about this particular industry because there's so many challenges, so many problems to try to fix. Yeah, Kelly, why do why why do you work? A combination of both, I think. One, because you have to, you have to make money in order to pay the bills and to be able to do the things that you love, but also to have many things going on and to help people. To help people. Yeah. Now, that's why I work. I work to help people. That's my passion. Here. I love helping people. What does your email say? General helper? <laughs> General helper. And I had another comment today. Somebody who's been a longtime friend, longtime colleague. They're a, a business partner, a customer in reality, and sent an email back to me and said, hey, I don't know how many emails I've gotten from you, but I just noticed that your title says General Helper. I love it. <laughs> Every day when Sweet. it goes out, Somebody ends up catching on to it, and it's just one more, and it actually it makes my day. Mm -hmm. So, Kelly, how do we tell employees why we're working? So we've got a group of employees, 40 or 50, depending on what size auction you are. Why? Why are you here? Do you tell them or you show them why you're there? I try to do both. Both, both. right. Yeah. Exactly. I think explaining to them the why, but I think it's important in showing them the why and asking them why they're there. You show them by showing up. You show them by being genuine. I think you show them by having fun, too. If you are not having fun, then why are you there? What do we write CRs? To inform our customers and our wonderful dealers of what kind of products they're selling and to protect the auctions. We want to protect them from uh, arbitrations, which are the wonderful part of our world mm -hmm. as well. Uh, but I'd like to kind of back up a little bit on the, the why, how you why to kind of mirror what Kelly said is, I tell my guys, I'm not going to ask you to do something that I don't, or I won't. If I need to, I'll get out on the lot and do CRs. I'll room snow. I'll do whatever we need to do to get the job done. And I feel by doing that, I've gotten respect and my employees believe in that. Stand behind me. Leadership through action. So how do you lead through action in HR, Kelly? Mm, no, that's good. I was just going to tag on to the other one. I was going to ask Aaron a question about, do you think you do that because you're having fun? Like showing up in that way and, and being there and being able to do the same job as everyone else is, I think, a sign of having fun and enjoying. All right. So I got a question for you, Kelly. I've traveled with you in the past, in mm. a prior life when I was a consultant. So I wasn't working for the auction, but I was consulting, helping auction. That's where I met you. I noticed one thing different about you, but I want you to explain it. So in the past, I would go to an auction and I would see HR walk in and HR would usually, this is my experience. These are my yeah. viewpoints. I would yeah. see HR sit behind a, day, a table or sit behind a desk, sit in the office. Mm -hmm. And that was the extent of it. When yeah, I met please. you, you did things completely different. Safety yeah. vest, shoes, bottle of water, outside. Whoa. Why? Yeah. Handing Why out, would you handing go outside? Out relationship building, understanding, still go back to having fun. That is having fun. It's talking to the people. It's getting to know them. It's building their relationship. And the biggest part of the role that I'm in and what I believe in as far as people and culture is understanding the business. You can't under, I mean, I guess in my opinion, it's harder to understand the business if you sit behind and not go out and about and talk to people and build those relationships and understand their day in and day out. What do they do? How do you write a CR? What do you do out on the lot? You have to get out there and understand what everyone is doing and show them that you care, show them that you want to do it and have fun, really understanding both people and the business at the same time. If 
also shows employees that you're human, that yeah. you're not like HR, like you're not like this bad stereotype of what people think <laughs> HR is. Right. You're out there mingling with the employees and people right. and, and getting to know yep. them and letting them get to know you so they're not right. always tensed and scared when you come walking in or walking by, right? It's, yeah. It's, it goes a long way when you do have to have a difficult conversation, but I hope that 90% of the time it isn't those difficult conversations. You're talking about good things. I think people tend to remember those 10% of the conversations and you get categorized as being like the, you know, I can tell you a bunch of names that I've been called before just on jobs that you've had to do. But Let's hear them. There. Let's hear them. What names? Come on. <laughs> Share with us. Not podcast friendly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So here's here's my version of what I saw you do through my mm-hmm. eyes as a general manager and somebody that's worked at auctions for a long time. What I remember is you going out to the detail shop to talk to the detail line. We were standing mm-hmm. in Louisiana and it was hot and mm-hmm. it was a holiday mm-hmm. and you were still out there talking to them and you weren't out there just one day, but you also went to check in and the check in building was hot, dirty dusty the cars were coming in on trucks you were learning how to check in cars Mm -hmm. you went into the detail shop learned how they did their process after the detail shop you watched them do pictures and you're helping park cars that's what i remember i've never seen an hr person do those things it's breaking down walls a lot of times you're like hey i'm hr you need to come in and sit with me at my table and talk to me and tell me what you do Mm -hmm. instead what you did is you went out to their world where they're cleaning the cars parking the cars checking the cars in all that good stuff and said, hey, I'm here to learn about you. Tell me what's doing. How can I help you? Right. And yeah. you broke down walls. Perfect. And then you did it again in another city later in the summer. It was July. And I believe the humidity was probably 97%. I think the uh, thermometer said, and you were outside walking around, learning about the processes. When I think most people, including myself, wanted to be inside where there was air conditioning and bottled water. Well, that sounds great. Yeah. I was going to detail cars too. I was, I thought I was going to have to jump in and detail. I was like, I'm not sure I'm wearing the right stuff, but let's go. Let's do it. I know where there's a secondhand store down the street. We can get you fixed up. Perfect. Yep. Exactly. No, but I mean, it's, it's how, how are you going to know just by asking questions is great, but you have to get into the day to day in order to really understand what is going on and come up with different questions. I remember in doing that, you come up with different questions. Why is it like this? Why is it like that? Tell me more about this. I remember even specifically how recruiting for positions, you can understand when you see it, what is that job going to entail? And then you can get the right candidate that's going to fit the culture and for the position if you've seen the work. Like I want to throw something in because I've been around and if it's 105 out, yeah. And if, if you're out there detailing, so if you're HR and you're isolated in your office and you've never experienced detailing, what happens in trucking anyway, this is what happens. When the temperature rises outside, the temperature uh, emotions are, get higher too. Yeah. And it really is a shorter fuse when it's hotter outside because you're sweating and you're hot and you always have your normal problems on top of your home problems on top of now this guy's not doing his job right and you snap. And I don't know what it is. but you, So if you don't understand like the job itself, then add in the elements, add in everything else. And some guy comes in and he's red and he's mad and he's hot and he's ready to kill somebody. Then you're like, whoa, whoa, you're call the police. But having touched it, seen it and done it. Now you go, okay, I understand why. Let's get you some water. Let's get you in the AC. Come here, sit down, calm down. Give me 30 minutes. Just cool it down. Right. Completely. And there's been other situations too. Aaron knows about this is the snow sometimes. So the other element, hearing stories, like I can hear the story from a leader of being like, hey, my people had to, we all had to get out and we had to shovel, you know, snow plows didn't come, we had to shovel out cars, took five hours, right? I live in Vermont, so I know exactly what that is like. So I've had to shovel my own driveway. I couldn't imagine doing it for hours and hours and hours. That's a different environment that those individuals have to work in. So absolutely right. When they're having a negative day or they walk off of the job, it's different in like normal the normal conditions you can understand so why perfect mic drop mic <laughs> shows over <laughs> there you go good thing i got an edit button okay Good so job. let's let's throw in another another topic or another wrinkle into this why so let's talk about generations so ty you and i are probably two old guys here and then aaron's probably coming in a, a close he's he's a close third and then we've got kelly who's much younger all right <laughs> we've got we've got a lot of different generations Okay. The older generation, if you tell somebody, hey, I need you to go clean this car, 
what do they usually do? Better go, go do it. Go go do it. Yeah, exactly. They're going to follow <laughs> order. Okay, they're order takers, and they're used to it. that's that's the word. That's how they grew up. That's their environment. That's their generation. Now, as you get into younger, so I'm a Gen Xer. I'll just say it. I'm a Gen Xer. Somebody tells me go clean it. I'm probably going to go, okay, clean it. And I might go, well, what the hell? Why am I doing this? I won't say anything, but I'm going to go do it. But today, when you start getting into millennials, and then especially Gen Z, if you tell them to go clean that car, they ain't going to budge. And then if you're yeah. an older person, like let's say you're Gen X or a boomer, and you're the boss, and you go, I told you to go clean that car. Go clean that car. And they're still not going to go clean the car because there's Ooh. one thing they really want to know. And then they'll go do anything for you, but they want to know why. Yeah. If you don't tell them why, they ain't going to go do it. Yeah. There's a lot of value in why, you know, I think there is because, you know, you, okay. That, as soon as you said that, Rich, I was thinking about my truck drivers and go, go to Kansas city, grab a load of nine cars, hurry, go. Why? Mm -hmm. right. Or why can't I pick up nine cars where I'm sitting and take them to the auction and then pick up those nine? Why do I, why? And you're like, Oh, okay. If it depends on who you are. I mean, I, generally took the time to explain it. It usually worked out better if you, if you did take the time to explain it versus just saying, man, would you just hurry up and leave? Mm -hmm. That would create a bigger divide later. Mm -hmm. Start building resentments, right? Gosh, I hate it when he just tells me to go do something. I think I'm going to quit today. And on top of that, I ask why, but then in the same breath, there's I ask, what's in it for me? That's the next. Mm. I mean, that's more yeah. like, I think, honestly, like Gen Z is like the, what is it? What's in it for me? Right. Uh, or that's not my job. I'm a CR writer. I'm not going to go shovel. There's not what, you know, the art wasn't in my job description when you hired me. Right. Like, <laughs> no, like we're all a team here. We're all trying to get the same object done. We're all trying to hear the sell card. Right. And, um, yeah. How do you feel, to, how do you think like, the why fits into personality types? Because as we're talking about the why and giving the specific examples about, like Ty's, your, your example is about pick up the cars to here or go do this job. Me being a blue on, you know, for the disc, I'm thinking how instead. I'm thinking, how am I going to do this? How do you want me to do it? Which, which, what order, you know, all of those questions are coming to my mind as opposed to the why. So I wonder if yeah. how that in. That gets really tricky in car hauling, especially. And I had a lot of blues that worked for me. And man, that was hard, hard, hard. Ooh. Those blues are difficult people to work with. They got difficult personalities. <laughs> well, in car hauling, there's there's not necessarily a right way. I mean, there's get them on without breaking anything and make sure they're secure. And then you can even fight about what's secure. Is it two straps, four straps, or three? Mm -hmm. And then you can fight about, well, I would, there's nine cars. How do you load them? Oh, Wait. boy. Yeah. No. <laughs> Have you heard of the Gauss-Jordan method in finite math in college? Remember that class? Oh, no, don't, no, don't, no, no, <laughs> no. The blues will There's a lot of different ways. There's a lot of different ways to load those cars. There's a formula. You can take the nine cars, and then you can put it into this weird formula. I don't remember the formula, but it spits out 892 different ways to load those nine cars on that one truck. So how do you load them, Kelly? That's too much. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> how do you strap them down? Yep. Whatever car you find first is one you load first. Mm, man. <laughs> the, the one the one with the drippy oil pan goes on top, and then the convertible yeah. that won't close um, goes right down underneath, underneath it. it. So that when you're driving down the road, you get the oil drip into the side of the convertible. So let's go back and touch on something that you mentioned. And I'm gonna use Kelly, I'm gonna use you for example if you allow. There's a lot of there's blues, right? So when somebody says, Hey, you're a blue, which is uh, compliance and it's details and people want things the same. Now, there's another deeper step to this that a lot of people may miss, and that is how do you use the knowledge within that category? So, for example, we just gave you the, what was it, the, the Michael Jordan in, infinite method or whatever you said, Ty? Oh, finite, we, finite math, yeah. Yeah, finite math. And we overwhelmed you. But a yeah. lot of blues are going, well, details, I want to know. It's calculation. It's compliance. Why is Kelly freaking out if she's a blue? Well, it's how you use knowledge. And I know you, and you use knowledge based off of experience. If you've experienced it, then you categorize it. If you haven't, you uncategorize it and become overwhelmed. So right. there's different variations within each one of the colors that can affect. And then if we just make the assumption that you're a straight up blue and, and I'm going to give you all 916 <laughs> ways to load a truck, you're going to be happy. No. Nope. Not and at all. <laughs> yeah, a couple different ways. So that one's well, what, gets worse with, what gets worse with the blue in trucking is there's these things called E-logs, electronic logbooks, 
Okay. And you can only go, I mean, so a blue, which I had plenty of them, they're like, hey, I need you to run to Kansas City, grab those nine, and get back to Joplin. Ready, go. They, while I just said that, how fast I said it, they've already calculated it can't be done according to the logbook. Well, I did it twice yesterday. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I can do it. Now, the blue starts going into this panic land about compliance. And in trucking, you've got a lot of compliance. Well, that load's going to be too heavy. Am I going to be heavy on my steers, my drives, or my trailer axles? And then you start going into all these things. And Man, could you please just, yeah. just but the, but now we'll, we're back we'll figure it out as we why. get there. All right. So, so what did you do, Ty? You, what did what in your past you're a truck driver right truck well owner, what did you do? as a as a value based leader here's what I did not knowing what a value based leader was, but I determined Keith and Chuck have to have every detail I didn't know it was blue, so before I ever called Keith or Chuck here's I, I stop okay I'm in a hurry I'm always in a hurry because I gotta go I stop and I'm gonna give a load to Keith I, I write down the cars I write how I want them loaded. I look at what time I'm getting ready to call him, and I calculate real quick in my head because I've done it enough. He can get up there, and he can at least get back to Lamar. I need him there by 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. It's 1 o'clock today. I'll have the cars pulled. If I know I got the cars, so I had to take the time to step back to calculate all this, knowing he's going to ask this one, this one, this one, and this one. Every single time I send this guy a load, he's going to ask these same four questions, and if I don't have the answer... It's going to take me more time to explain it to him, which we just talked about, right? And this is where the relationship comes in. I heard Kelly mention relationship earlier. So this is where the relationship comes as a value-based leader. I'm getting to know my, my team, my guys, the guys I count on, the guys I love, the guys I need to get the job done. I'm counting on them. So <clears throat> once I determine, I can call Case and just say, Case, go to Kansas City. He doesn't ask a question. It doesn't even matter. He doesn't even, he's just gone. Like, he calls me 30 minutes later, I'm in Kansas City, what am I doing? I'm like, whoa, how'd you get there so fast? So you, you learn the, <clears throat> I guess, disc, what we're talking about, which I didn't know what that was. And then you learn how to communicate as a leader with each individual, time, so that's 20 that are driving trucks, not including 10 office people, not including owner-operators. So you learn how to start <clears throat> communicating in a way that makes sense to them and gets the job done effectively, safely. Is that fair? So that's how you do it. That's good. And, you, and an interesting point you point you came up with is when you're talking about this blue personality, we're picking on the blues. Too bad. Um, Sorry if but, you're blue out there. No, nope. <laughs> if you're blue, no, I'm no, not but, a blue. Right, but you're mind. saying, hey, we're, you, we need all these details. And I can already hear somebody sitting there going, well, God, I don't like talking to Ty because every time I talk to Ty, I got to give him all the details. Why? Why can't Ty just figure this out? I have to explain it every time. So that's when I would say, all right, stop. Take a step back. Okay, that's what's important to Ty, and that's how you motivate Ty. So if you want to communicate with somebody, communication is a two-way street. And if I'm talking to you and you're not listening, it's doing no good. But it doesn't just stop with the talking and the listening. I've got to speak to you in terms that you understand and can relate to. So I need you, Ty, the blue driver, to get all this done. I better come and I better be ready to explain to it rather than throwing a temper tantrum, getting ready to grab my, what was it the other day, my binky and my blanket and my little <laughs> my bottle. Right. Yeah, we so, don't need them. So, details. Yeah. No. So each one of these people. So we talk about why, and every individual has a different why. Why do I have to explain it to Ty? Why, when I see, why when I see Aaron, do I have to sit down and have a cup of coffee and a donut and talk about last night's football game and his bowling game and how his family's doing before I can actually tell him to go get a car? Okay, that's the world he lives in. The green mm -hmm. person. Why do I have to? Why do I have to continue to show them every day that I care about them and they're really important and they're great for the team and give them this tip-off because that's the world they live in. If we just go through it like, like we're doing, and you, and you and I have talked about this, Ty. I've done it in the past. Just go straight dominant, take over because mm -hmm. we think that's what the world wants, and it's not mm -hmm. nothing our ego gets in the way. Mm. <laughs> Boy, does it. It's a, it's a powerful thing, and too, you know, the, the details, so you, if you're really paying attention, so you're like, okay, I gotta, here's Keith. Keith. Keith has to know what he's going to get, how to load it, and then it's like, okay, well, oh, shoot, I've got uh, Julie pulling your cars. So Julie will have your cars pulled. Where's the keys? I mean, it's that quick. So, okay, add one more to the list. Here's what Keith needs to know next. So the keys will be in the mailbox, and the combo to the mailbox is 1988. Whatever, okay. So, and each time, if you're paying attention, so what, what I, what I kind of did, and I don't know if it's right or wrong, but how to, and, and it gets even worse. Like some blues, they can't, you can't send them a text. 
they have they have to talk to you, mm. right? So I always thought, if I send it all in a text, I've got proof that I told you exactly what to do. There's no reason on God's earth for you to have to call me at 1 a.m. None. And sure enough, there's the text. Sure enough, phone rings at 1.30 a.m. Hey, Ty, where are the keys? Oh, boy. Here we go, right? Well, really, if you if you really look into it, and this took this took years to figure this out with Keith. This is a real story. What really Keith was looking for, he was very worried about doing a bad job, and he really wanted to know, I just want to do a good job for you. And for me, I'm like, just go do the job. I mean, you're gonna everybody in car hauling, you mess up. It's just gonna happen. So you don't really need all this information. But for him, it was real important. So anyway, enough of that. But <clears throat> I think uh, listening, okay, paying attention, it's real important for sure. And then learning how to communicate with people. And it also works reverse too. So the car dealer that calls at 1 o'clock in the afternoon after the auction's over that started at 9, they're different too. And you got to start learning their personality. Some of them have to give you every freaking detail. There's going to be a dent on that right front corner. I don't know how it got there, but it's got a little scratch on it too. When I bought it, I knew it was there, but I, I was like, I didn't. I should have done a deduct on that, at least $100. I can't even believe I paid that much money. For, okay, that's one car, Bob. What about the other eight? Oh, boy, here we go. You know, I take that phone call and I hand it off to somebody else. They loves to hear detail because I, I, I just tell me you got nine and I'll figure it out. That's the kind of guy I am. So then you start pairing up customers with office people, dispatchers, information people <clears throat> that love to hear details and love information and love structure, order, different things like that. And you start matching these things, and it's, it becomes amazing. So the, the car dealer that I established a relationship with, that I've developed that relationship with, that I really have a hard time listening to all the details on the nine cars he bought and how he felt when he got there and how he's got to go home. And, whew, oh, okay. And I pass him off to my office manager, and he never calls me back. I see him at the auction. Hey, Bob, how you doing? Great, Ty. Appreciate your, all you do for us, getting our cars. I haven't talked to you in months. You okay? Yeah, I'm doing great, Bob. Love you. Bye. And it, that's where you really start seeing cool stuff. So it goes kind of both ways. You know, I was thinking about an auction that I've been to. The girls at the desk, the front, you know, check out whatever you title girls. I don't know what, what you call them. But I was thinking about them. I thought, boy, you know who knows the dealer better than anybody? They do. Yep. How are they being trained to deal with that guy? How are they, you know, are they, do they know anything about DISC? Do they understand, you know, I was like, whoa, I actually thought of that one today. That was cool. Going Sorry. back to something that you said, Ty, talking about, I think it was Keith that you had said, you figured out yeah. his why, what motivated him. How did you get there? A lot of patience, a lot of patience. I needed Keith. And see, I think I've told you guys this before. And this is how, so uh, what you give away is what you keep. Well, I want to keep Keith. Mm -hmm. He may not be the best, he may not be the fastest, but he knows what he's doing and he's reliable, right? And it might drive me crazy that he has to know every single detail, but if I can figure out how to deal with that. So maybe I'm selfish, right? I don't know. I mean, that's so let's, pretty bold. Go let's ahead. Re let's reverse engineer this. You hauled cars. You were a car hauler. Uh-huh. Correct. That's what kept people coming back to you. Why would they continue to go back to tie to haul cars? What was uh, because they could the hustle they dealers car dealers smell hustle they can see it and they can smell it so I've always been a hustler so they call and they and dealers always love to test you I don't know if you guys know this or not they always like to test and see if you are who you say you are so the reason I think is because they would call Ty got nine cars go get them can I get the VIN nope I don't, I'm I'm on my way to the casino and we're going out to the bar later okay do you know if the gate passes are out. I don't know. I got to go. I'm getting on the plane. Bye. It's right. eight o'clock at night so on Wednesday. So let's break this down. <laughs> what did you do? You hauled Figure cars, it out. right? Yeah. You hauled, no, you hauled cars. I did. Big deal. There's how many car haulers are there in the United States? I'd go find anybody. Uh, yeah, true. How many car haulers are in the United States? Oh, that's a good question. I don't think anybody knows the answer. I mean that. Okay, there's over. That'd be fair. Okay. So there's hundred. You're a one in one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you haul cars. How do you haul cars? Same way as everybody else. No. One at well, a time. I know for the most part you had, I mean, if I'm going to use your tagline, you had a one ton and a wedge. You lost 10 grand the first year. Then you worked up to 20 trucks with nine mm -hmm. car stingers on the back. So how mm -hmm. did you haul cars? You hauled them in various ways. You had trucks with trailers, long trailers, big trailers, short trailers. You, you hauled them a lot of different ways. Okay, so now you've set yourself apart a little bit farther. 
from all the people that just do the what? Just talk talk. Okay, now you just told us why. What was your why? You were a hustler. Uh-huh. That's what set you apart from everybody else. Why would you go? Why would you go get car tie? Somebody says, "Well, he's a great car hauler." Well, we want to know why, right? The other yeah. guy wants to know. Aaron, why would you hire? Why would you go with top? If I didn't give you a why, you wouldn't hire, right? So if we don't have our why, we don't understand our. What do we do at the auction? We sell cars. Um, there's oh god, how many is there? <laughs> there's a lot. There's, five, there's probably 500 auctions in the U.S., maybe more. Oh yeah. Plus there's yeah. Like all these online platforms and everything else, and there's wholesale. Mm. So we're selling wholesale cards. That's what we do. Okay, how do we do it? Well, our method is a physical auction where we auction them off. Now, here's the, here's the killer. There's, in the city I'm working in, there's seven auctions. I think we're the eighth one. Eight auctions in one city. Why would they come to buy a car at where I'm working? And that's where we've got to set up a different. So how do we do it? We do it off of value-based leadership. We're building a community where people want to come. Why do you want to go buy cars at auction? Because they're nice people. They take care of me, and they make me feel like wanted. Well, you can go buy cars anywhere. You can get a better deal across the, across the town. Yeah, but they make me feel like crap, and they don't have time to haul the car. I think also to add on to that, yeah, the, there's definitely the hustle. But there's also the there, – there really is there is a sense like I, I'm – it sounds stupid. I hate even saying it, but like it was really important for me to make sure that you got your cars and to get – a, a driver to understand that and to operate in that. What I mean, when I say operate, what do I mean? I mean, okay, look, when you get to the auction, I don't need you to be a jerk. When you get to the dealership, I don't need you to be a jerk. I mean, we would have meetings Monday, regular meetings once a week, Monday before everybody goes. Here's some basics, you know, get the skull out of your mouth, maybe put a ball cap on if your hair's a mess, just kind of get some of the sleepy bugs out. <clears throat> Introduce yourself. I would stand, everybody stand up, turn to the guy next to you. Hi, my name's Ty. Appreciate your business. Look them in the eye. Shake their hand. I mean, sounds stupid. So, I mean, I'm like, I'm teaching adult men how to look somebody in the eye and shake a hand and be professional yep. in car hauling. So one of the differentiators for our company was a sense of professionalism from Ty down to the guy changing the oil. <clears throat> that. So I would, I would test it. I would check it. Okay, uh, Keith, I'm going to have you go drop the cars off at Roper Kia, and you're going to be asked for Terry. Terry, okay? And when you get there, I want you to talk to Terry. I want you to tell him thank you for doing business with Cars on the Move. We appreciate you. Follow him, didn't track him, didn't call, didn't, after he dropped the cars off, didn't call Terry, did, hey, did Keith come and talk to you? None of that. Just go do it. So a month later, I run into Terry at the auction. Terry's like, man, that guy, Keith, that came down, oh, my gosh, that guy is amazing. I mean, did you know that his mom and dad owned the local cement company in Monette? Yeah, I did. That's great, you know. And you start hearing that stuff, right? So it's not being shoved down your throat. If you don't do this, I'm going to fire you. But this is really beneficial for all of us as a group, as a team. So if you, if you can do this, it would be much appreciated. I'm not saying you have to, you're going to get fired, but let's show a, a different level of see that car hauler guy over there and that guy with grease literally everywhere, you know, <laughs> prefer good. not to look or act like that guys. I mean, I'm just telling you, I mean, we can, but look at this $400,000 truck you're driving. Yeah. Let's have a little resp- or a class, right? <laughs> You're creating culture. You're creating culture both for the team and for what they're knowing you all as, right? You're differentiating yourselves. Yeah, it's good. All right. Kelly, so, what's your favorite place to shop? Where's my favorite favorite place to shop? Oh, goodness. Um, uh, which one? <laughs> oh, well, I live in Vermont, so there's not very many here. I can tell you about a good experience that I had. Is that, I think okay, that's probably where you're it. going. What's that? Let's hear it. Uh, it was in Florida. Um, with two other girlfriends on a girl's trip. We went to Saks Fifth Avenue and had our own dressing room. People that were working there were amazing. Customer service, but not super pushy. Super helpful and got us what we needed. And we felt uh, like we had an experience in the shopping trip. There it is. They created an experience for you. Yeah. Why would they hire, Why would you haul cars with Ty? Experience, right? Yep. He's going to hustle. He's going to bring He's going to make it fun. Why would I buy cars out of Michigan? Why would I go up to Why would I go up to Flint, Michigan, to buy cars? The experience from the auction experience. one, yeah. right? the culture, People. and the CRs are correct. And the CRs are correct. There you go. Accuracy. What is What is uh, What happens when you have accurate CRs, Ty? Uh, it's called CAT. It's consistency, accuracy, and transparency, which equals trust. And it's not an overnight game, by the way. It takes a little time. Yeah. So you go up and you buy cars from my friend Aaron because 
He's been running cars for what? How many years? 18 years. So he's been running cars for 18 years. They're all oh. consistent. He write accurate CRs and they're transparent. So you've got the three to make the cat so you can trust them. So I'm a dealer. So the, what is it? The experience of going to buy it in Flint is it's that experience of trust. I'm, I know what I'm going to get. It's always going to be the same. What they say it is is what it's going to be when I get it back to my yard. Uh -huh. That's why you buy from Flint. Go along the lines of like training these CI writers. I kind of touch on what uh, Ty said about his truck driver. You're learning what you have to do. For key. What what is his hot buttons? What his what his needs are. Uh -huh. so when I'm training, everybody learns different, right? So, you know, some people are more hands on. Some more people I can give them the, the pamphlet of it, word by word of how to ride a car. They're gonna know it by blues. tomorrow of how to do it. <laughs> um, but poor Kelly. Yeah, it's poor okay. blues. You know. Um, oh, when you got a group of guys or girls that you're training on CRs, you kind of got to learn where their sweet spots are so you can get yep. through to them and, and make them understand like what the importance of the CR is, why you're out here doing it, why you have to do it in the 10 feet of snow that we're living in uh -huh. or the 110 degree weather that this guy lives in. Yeah. It takes kind of an art over time to kind of like learn that and seeing back in my days of coaching, like little kids, same thing, right? They're, trying to crawl those cats and keeping them interested and keeping them understanding why they got to call that dent, why they got to call structural. So it goes back to kind of the disc, right? Before I even knew it, I was doing it before anyone understood it. So yeah, it's kind of interesting how to like all this kind of ties together, to be honest with you. It's more I learn about blues, yellows, and greens. And totally reds. does. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Well, I, I look at like the auctions that I've been to. And Rich and I have talked about this, maybe with you, Kelly, I don't remember who we, but we were talking about uh, different places of business when you walk in, it, you, you get a vibe. Yeah. And what is that vibe? And the ones that you go into and you feel a warm vibe, a welcome vibe, a happy vibe, I want to be here vibe. If you start watching, like, because that's what I do, I love to people watch. So you watch who the dealers go to, who they talk to at the auction, how they feel, who, when they're talking to that one, do they smile? When they walk by, are they smiling? And if you're really, really paying attention, it's really cool. Because I don't know, you know, like, you, like, okay, well, I know the auction, and I know the GM. I've been going there for 20 years, picking cars up, dropping cars off. So I know everybody. And I know when I go to this certain auction that's maybe a little bigger than all the other ones, it doesn't have the same vibe. Everybody's kind of standoffish. Everybody's kind of, i got to do my job. I can't talk to you right now. I've got to hurry, hurry, hurry versus go to maybe more of an independent auction where there's some flexibility, there's some relationships that are established, there's trust. And, you know, Ty, I'm sorry, I can't get the gate pass. Well, we really need to take it because it's Shane's car, and we know what's going to happen tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock when the car's not there. Shane's going to call both of us, and the world's going to come to an end of nuclear war. I mean, just chaos. Okay, Ty, just get the car and go. We'll get. We'll deal with it tomorrow. Now, that's a relationship. And, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've done crazy stuff like that. And you're like, oh, don't say that on the – meet me at the gate. Well, well, this is our customer. And this this is what really bothers me. Go ahead. Oh, Rich uh, is over there falling like, apart. We allow gate – cars out without gate passes? <laughs> yeah. Edit. Well, I'm not sure. Yeah. Edit. Yeah. Well, it, back in the day, it, we did do that. <laughs> it was great. I loved it. I mean, but they but they knew me, and they knew if, if there was a problem, I'd either bring the car back or I'd pay for the car. And there was a trust. It, it took years to build, but I can say, hey, Mike, GM at an auction in my state. At 8 o'clock at night, he's having dinner. You can tell he's at whatever doing something that has nothing to do with work. Give him a call. Look, hey, it's Shane. You know Shane, right? Oh, yeah, gosh. You know that Camaro he bought? There's no gate pass. There's no, it's not showing he paid for it. It was an if. It didn't pass PSI. Maybe it did. I don't know. You know what's going to happen tomorrow. We're both going to spend three hours screwing with this. Just give me the car. I'm going to drop it off. If there's a problem, I'll pick it up because i got to come back anyway. Okay, Todd, just take the car. Now, I'm not saying that we can do that today, but it does put emphasis, in my opinion, on the relationship, the, the importance of the relationship, and it really what it really means to me, and this is where it, sometimes I can get really upset about this, my face turns red. When an auction pushes back on the transport guy who's trying to genuinely help the auction's customer, do you follow me? I'm trying to help you make you look good, auction. If, I, if, if we get this done, this guy's going to come back next week and buy more. Because what does a dealer want? He wants it now, and it better be damn easy, right? Am I wrong? Tell me, no. some, you guys. No. I want my. I, I don't need any. Con, I don't need any pushback. I don't need any 
just I'm here to buy cars and I want them. And then, and when you get this this division silos, whatever we want to call it, where oh we can't do that because the rule book says you can't do that, and sorry, so we're going to spend four hours tomorrow really over one car. You're going to it's going to cost you auction one man hour guaranteed at your lowest man hour, probably not, probably going to be mid management one hour. It's going to cost me an hour. And then we're both going to end up with the car, and we're going to lose the customer. Is it worth it? You know, and each situation is different. I get it. I understand. I'm not trying to push, give cars out without a gate pass. But my point is, is understanding who the mutual customer is here, and let's work together. That's so who's All right. So here's what I want. Here's what I want to say. I'm going to ask a question first, and it, there's no right or wrong answer. But Ty, do you know what your your personal why statement is? This is not an incrimination. It's a real question. And you can say no. I can pull one out of my ass real quick if you want. No. But, Ellie, yeah. Ellie, do you know yours? Do you know your personal why statement? Why you do what you do every day? It's developing. To help people become better versions of themselves, little steps along the way. Cool. Aaron, do you have a why statement? Do you know why you do what you do? Uh, to actually be a better person in life, to contribute to society, and to just be a good person all around, right? And uh, be able to have fun doing it and be able to support my family. So at the end of the day, they're going to remember how you made them feel, not be a set stone, right? So what's going to go on your gravestone? So when you die, so here's a, here's a challenge to everybody that's listening. You're dead, okay? And you have to write your own epitaph, or you have to write whatever's going to be on your headstone, or whatever they're going to read at your services. Write it down right now. What are they going to say? And then try to live up to that. And then one exercise I did, and I'll challenge everybody to do it, and it helps. So you ask me what my why statement is? It's to learn, to grow, to lead and create a world of dignity. I've got it memorized. Once I discovered and analyzed it and came down with exactly what I wanted to do, it gave me purpose. So now every day I get up and I go to work, why am I there? Because I want to create a world of dignity. Guess what? That means I just want to treat somebody with respect. Everybody that comes through. When I see somebody having a difficult day and I'm as, I'm as human as anybody else and I prejudge people, I'll walk through and I go, oh, God, here comes Ty again. you got to be kidding me. He's going to bitch about the truck again. He's going to want to arbitrate it. He said he paid too much. But what at the end of the day is it you want? And I have to stop myself and I have to say, what is your why statement, Rich? Learn, grow, lead, create dignity. At the end, you just want dignity. So Ty wants dignity. So now I'm going to have to go through it and learn. Why does Ty want to complain about that truck? How is this going to help me grow to become a better person? And then how can I lead everybody else around me so they can see what I'm doing because it's a vicious cycle. If we continue learning, we can continue growing. Can you grow? We can start leading. If we start leading. We can create that world of dignity. And now we get to the value base that we talk about. And we can build that organization and that community where people want to come through the front door. So when they open the door and that culture hits them in the face, they go, yes, this is where I want to be. And we're going, yeah, we want you here. And you're going to bitch about the truck because it's got a broken headlight that we did because it went out the gate at the wrong time. You didn't have the gate passed and we lost it in PSI. And here we are. So I challenge you, come up with your why statement. If you need help, reach out to me. Hit me up on LinkedIn. I can, I'll walk you through some exercises. You can do it on your own, but come up with your why statement. You've got to understand why you are doing what you're doing. And we want to help you. That's good. Mic drop there. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Meet Me at the Gate. I hope the conversation has helped to fuel your drive and equip you with insights to steer your team towards success. Remember, the road to success is always under construction. And until next time, keep your engines revving and your gas tanks full. So.